I've always been fascinated by Malaysia because food is at the heart of the country's culture. That is amazing. To find out what makes this cuisine so unique, the flavour and the aroma is really rich and strong. I could eat that all day long. I'm embarking on a journey of culinary discovery. This is the best curry shop I've ever seen in my life. I want to uncover the secrets of Malaysia's rich and diverse cooking styles. The noise of everything! Add flavour! <laughs> and use everything I've learned on my travels to help you transform your home cooking. This is my Malaysian adventure. And I think it's going to be spectacular. This leg of my journey brings me to Saranban, on the west coast, just south of Kuala Lumpur. Saranban was once a mere stopover for those travelling to the south of Malaysia. But in recent years, the town has transformed itself from a pit stop to a foodie haven. Today, Saranban has a worldwide reputation for serving up some of the very best Malaysian cuisine. And I can't wait to tuck in. During my stay, I'll be finding inspiration from the astonishing array of raw ingredients on offer here. I don't know about you, but when I come to the market, I just get excited because I see so many fresh Have vegetables. Have you seen my face? <laughs> I love this! A Malaysian auntie will be teaching me a few of her authentic cooking techniques. That has to be probably one of the coolest things I've ever seen in my whole life. And I'll bring home all she taught me to make a Malaysian classic, clams with sambal sauce. Sambal to the Malaysians is like ketchup to the Europeans. Saranban is a small town just an hour's drive south of Kuala Lumpur. But it's the ideal place for me to learn more about the complex Malaysian cooking story because the unique flavours of this region are so celebrated. So much so, people from Kuala Lumpur often pop down here just to have a meal. The best place to start exploring is Saranban's famous food market. This is the sort of stuff I love. There's just this cacophony of noise and smell and people. And this is the way they live. They live, they go to the market, they buy their food, they go home. And I'm really, really excited. Guiding me through the market's festival of sights and smells is local food expert Chui Hong. Hiya. Oh, Chui. hi, John. How are you? Lovely to meet you. Nice yes. What's the plan? I don't know. Well, I, I, I thought since you're here, it would be great to show you the market because you've got lots of lovely fresh ingredients. You know, you've got like coconuts over there. Oh, you're making coconut milk? You get the coconuts and they will grate them and then squeeze the coconut milk and then you get your coconut cream. So here they sell it literally by the bag, the coconut milk. That's right, and it's fresh, but it's much better than the packet version. It's really creamy, yeah. You can literally get just about anything here. It's like a shopping mall. Everything in one shop, but everything is fresh. I've seen this before, that's a chicken. Yes, that's right. What's this? Oh, this is the black chicken. Um, we use this in Chinese cooking to make herbal chicken soup, and they're very lean, actually. Does it taste like chicken? Yes, the meat is more dense. I mean, all my travels around the world, I've never seen a black chicken. Pork scratchings. They're the biggest pork scratchings you've ever seen. These are some of the dried squids which you use to make uh, soup. I've just got to, I've got to find my way through here. Hello. Hello. And then yes. this, look, that is amazing. It's the fresh. abundance of all the fresh vegetables. And you just cannot stop thinking about what you want to cook for the day, you see. I, I don't know about you, but when I come to the market, I just get excited because I see so many fresh Have vegetables. Have you seen my face? <laughs> I love this! These are like some different type of spinach, but they're very fragrant. This is like a, a type of radish. And this is like leeks, but these are, I think, from China. You've got like the four angle beans. These grow very easily in Malaysia, and you can cook it with like some sambal belacan. It's like a, a shrimp paste and some chilies, and oh, it tastes amazing. Look at those yard long beans. 
Great for curries. Oh, oh even a I light stir fry. But they're yes. quite woody and quite nutty, aren't they? But they're mm. just. And to see them as fresh as this yes, is a right. joy. What are they? Chili paddies. But they must be seriously Full hot. Flavor, yeah, seriously hot. <laughs> Would you like to try them? No, no, uh, <laughs> no. Uh, I know if I had that right now, You'd I'd be, be running. For a drink. I'd be running up and down. <laughs> no, no way in the world. Yes. Uh, tell us about durian. Do you like durian? Have you tried durian before? Uh, I have, but yes. the rest of the world needs to know about durian. Tell us about durian. Well, it tastes like butter. It's a very creamy taste. But I have to admit that, that the smell of the fruit is, a, is an acquired taste. But it's, it's no different from like something like blue cheese, maybe? Yes. Yeah, <laughs> so, you yes. say butter, yes. I'd say probably blue stinky cheese. old cheese. <laughs> a nice, lovely piece of blue cheese. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> It's great to see so many ingredients I'll be able to use at home. So I want to get as much advice as I can from local Malaysian chefs. I'm now heading about half an hour inland from Seremban to a place called Nilai, and I'm going to meet an auntie. The term auntie is a respectful term for somebody who is older than you. You call somebody an auntie or an uncle. Restaurateur Auntie Irony has a great reputation for using fresh local produce in her traditional dishes. So I suspect she's just the person to teach me a thing or two about creating a Malaysian classic. Today I'm showing you chicken rendang. I love rendang. Great. This is lemongrass with onion and garlic, galangal. So what's that and one? And this is dried chilli. Dried chilli in the paste? Use, yes. And uh, we add a little bit of turmeric. A little bit of turmeric. Already it smells amazing. I know. Lemongrass, the... galangal, chilies. That's it, that's our basic herb. So now we're letting it simmer with the oil. So what do you think the secret is to rendang? You know what my dad used to say? Enough salt, enough coconut milk, enough tang, enough heat from the chili. That's it, you got yourself a great dish. All about balance. Balance. You can pour this one out for me and we... Into here? Yeah, and then we stir together. So just together. bits of joints yes. of chicken, yes. wings, legs, thighs, Everything, all yeah. cut up but on the bone. Yes, on the bone, that's how we do it here. Always on the bone. And then you coat the chicken in all that paste. In all that paste and just stir it about, you know. You don't colour the meat. You do colour the meat? For now, yes. Yes, yes on the outside first. We're not going to, like, totally cook it. No, of course not. Water? A little bit of water. Now we're going to pour the coconut milk in. And lots of coconut milk. You know, lots of coconut milk. For rendang. And then what happens to that? You boil it and boil it and boil it? Yeah, you just let it boil. So that has suddenly gone that's suddenly gone very thick already. And how long will that cook for, Auntie? One hour. While we leave the rendang to simmer, Auntie Irony wants to show me another speciality from this region. Lamang is a way of cooking rice dating back thousands of years using bamboo that's been left around the fire for four hours. So what you, I want you to do is to cut it open uh, and try to split it open like this. This both oh wonderful. Your fingers on the bamboo. There. This is banana leaf. It's wrapped in banana leaf. We it put it smells. such a way. It smells of, co of coconut and rice. Yeah. And that has to be probably one of the coolest things I've ever seen in my whole life. And this is it here? This is it. Would you like a taste? Can I try a bit? Yes. Look at that. Mm. Have a taste. That is simply delicious. An hour later, Auntie Irony's chicken rendang is ready to serve with a host of other typical Malaysian treats for a family feast. Now the rendang, I'm very excited about. And so I should, wow. Whoa! What? It's, no, delicious. 
Perfectly then balanced, Auntie. Yes, you. It's yeah. About enough salt. Mm -hmm. Enough cream. You know. Coconut. Cream, coconut. Yep. Enough uh, sourness. Mm. It's, and mix everything perfect. It's delicious. Absolutely delicious. And I've learnt a huge amount, so thank you. Uh, guys, come on, let's get stuck in. Let's Food time. In. Coming up, I'll be sampling more Seremban specialities. This is a, a delicious bowl of noodles. And seeing how chefs in the UK are creating their own little bit of Malaysian magic. That took you two minutes and ten seconds. Yeah. I'm at the market in Seremban, a foodie haven. My guide, Chewy Hung, is navigating me through the endless array of flavours. Are you hungry? We can go upstairs Am I and... Am hungry? Uh... <laughs> I'm always hungry. Come on. So here you can have a plate of rice and you pick the dishes you want. And um, I, I spoke to this auntie earlier and she says she gets up at like 3 o'clock in the morning and starts preparing all these dishes in time for, you know, breakfast, lunch. From chicken feet to clams yes. to chicken wings to pork, eggs, fried chicken, stuffed chilies. A good variety of uh, meat and wow. vegetable dishes. Oh, I think she's making the tose. The tose is also another type of bread, but it's made from rice. And they blend it and let it ferment overnight. And you eat it with some dal, some coconut chutney and some curries. What's great about watching people like this work is you know that what you just did then is really, really difficult. But she's made it look really, really easy. I'm on a mission to sample as many different flavours from this region as possible. So I've asked Chewy to show me one of her favourites. I'm going to take you to this shop that sells nothing but the best beef noodles in Surumban. Oh, yes, please. OK. They must be quite something because beef noodles are what Saramban's famous for. And according to Chewy, the legendary stall number 748 is considered to be Saramban's beef noodles specialist. The stall has been here for like 70 odd years or something. Let me order you the best dish. Uncle. Okay, go. Okay, go. So it's boiled beef, is it? Yes. They use this beef stock, which is made from the beef tribe, beef bones, everything on the Look at that. Yeah. That's great. A whole chunk of beef. And they use that, they boil um, all that. That's right, yeah. And, and basically, it's a bowl of uh, rice noodles with some gravy, which is made from the beef broth, some preserved mustard leaves, and some peanuts. And they serve it with some lovely beef jerky. I don't know how they make it, but that beef, is, it's its really tasty. So dry, you must... dry beef. Yes, that's right. Right, what do we got here? Thank you. Soup. So this is like the dry beef noodles. Mm. Yum. Mm. I can taste some fine spice powder. Star anise, five mm, spice. Star anise, yes, yes, yes. That flavour mm. and with the spring onion and, yes. and all the bits through it. Plum sauce. Yes. Oh, yeah, really, really lovely. Yes. You must try some of the soup because this broth here has been boiled for I don't know how many hours, but it's full of flavour. It's it's so big on flavour. You can taste the offal. Yes. Uh, you can taste the richness of it. Yes. But in a way, when you when you drink it like that, it feels like it's doing you good. Yes. You know, it feels like it's filling up your heart and you feel strong and... It, to me, this is what, what seems to make up Malaysia. I've got a bowl of noodles with beef jerky on top and then I've got Chinese flavours of yes. five spice and ginger. I've got chilli sauce, which, which I associate more with Thailand or Singapore. Yes. It's this extraordinary cuisine. In Malaysia, it's the diversity of the cultures which has, you know, helped to develop the flavours of... Uh, well, I've got to... This is... A, a delicious bowl of noodles. Back in the UK, there's a host of professional chefs creating exciting Malaysian cuisine using authentic ingredients readily available here. I've come to Edinburgh to meet Chef Mei Ling, who makes a great version of a traditional dish that's ready to eat in minutes. Nice to meet you here. Nice to meet you Selamat too. datang. Yeah, the kitchen is upstairs. Are you ready? Yes, mm -hmm. great. Yeah, Thank let's you. Let's go. May, what are we cooking? 
We are going to cook uh, char kway teow. Kway teow, I saw all around Malaysia, there's stalls everywhere saying uh, kway teow. It's uh, very popular in Malaysia, so you can get it everywhere in Malaysia. We Over to you. Cooking now. So heat up the wok, we don't need too much oil. Alright, so just put a little bit of the garlic. Prawns. Beans brown. What we have to do now is put in the fresh rice noodle. The sauce, light soya sauce and the uh, dark soya sauce. Yeah. Eggs. Okay. Put some chili. This is dried chilies which dried have been chili. soaked. Then blended and then fried into like a what I would call chili jam. Okay, at last the chives. That's it. That took you two minutes and ten seconds. A nice street food, cha kway teow, a popular street food in Malaysia. You want to have a try, John? Oh yes, please. Lovely, a little bit of spice in the background, the sweetness of the sauce, the soy sauce. The noodles are lovely and soft. You can taste the bean sprouts, the Chinese chives are crunchy. It's gorgeous. And with authentic Malaysian ingredients so easy to find now, you can whip up something equally gorgeous yourself. Uh, this is Chinatown, and you can come into these shops and you can discover and explore. Otherwise, if you're not close to a Chinatown or uh, an Asian store, online. There's loads of stuff online. Look, this is all dried. And they just pack it in boxes, they send it to you. Best way to do it. Now I want to show you how to cook a dish with a sauce that's about as Malaysian as you can find. So back in my own kitchen, and it's all about clams and sambal. Sambal to the Malaysians is like ketchup to the Europeans. Sambal is served with almost everything. It's a condiment in the same way as we would use a sauce or a chutney, uh, but it's fiery hot. And I'm going to do it with clams. And the reason I'm doing it with clams is because I like the word for clams in Malaysian. Clams in Malaysian are la la. So today's recipe is la la sambal. This one is called sambal balachan, which means that it's got in it this extraordinary dried shrimp paste. And that shrimp paste has to be toasted. You can buy it in any Asian supermarket and put it in a bit of foil and just toast it. And when it's toasted, it turns into this dark brown biscuity type thing. It's very, very strong. It's very, very pungent. But it is the essential ingredient of my sambal. So let's get moving. So I'm going to leave the seeds in the green chilli and put those all in to my blender. The red ones are a little bit hotter, so I'm going to take out half the seeds. Into the mixer. Add the onions. The dried chilies, which are more a toasty flavour than the fresh chilies. Roasted shrimp paste and the juice of four limes. To that now, a little bit of water and blend. That's it. In there is a very, very spicy space indeed. Oil into the wok and let the wok heat up. This is going to cook in here for about 10 to 15 minutes. The one thing that all the sandbars have in common is that you know when they're ready, when the oil starts to separate from the paste. I want it to go from this orangey colour to a dark, rich red. I want it to split. I want it to become a paste. I want it to become a concentrate of spice. But it takes a bit of time. Be patient with it. There's no right or wrong about cooking sambal. If you don't have time to make it, 
it's fine. You can buy it in jars. There's all sorts of jars these days, of chili oil and uh, chili paste and chili sauce and all sorts of things. And sambal does come in little tiny jars. There it is. There's the colour. Dark, red, rich. And look at that thick, lovely paste. Take most of it out of the wok. And keep it to one side. Turn the wok back on full blast. When the pot's hot and it starts to smoke, the clams go in. Listen to them. A bit of water. Lid on. And then give it a shuffle. All the lovely crispy bits, all the bits from making in the sandbar around the outside of that wok are now coating the clam shells. Because when you eat this dish, it's not about taking a knife and fork, it's about picking them up with your hands, sucking the sandbar off the shells and eating the clam that comes with it. The clams themselves don't take long to cook at all, about four or five minutes. You'll see they start to open. Nature's own resources put together, look at that, look at that. Stir that together. Add to this a little bit more sambal. And then drop in some bean sprouts. Give it a mix. And in it goes. Some crispy shallots to finish. Great for texture and great for flavour. How cool is that? Clams with chilli sambal sauce. <laughs>